opinion. So this is the last section of uh, of the market economics. Okay, um, the previous one we we talk about the features, different features of the uh, different features about the uh, market economy. Okay, so this is the second part, and over here we're gonna focus on they call it uh, chart flow. So, and it means that how the money goes around these systems, and they're gonna explain explain us. Explain it to us how this uh, circulation of money goes around this system. Okay. Uh, remember, you have uh, this the same PowerPoint. You have it in your notebook. My God, can you imagine this? Yes. Okie dokie. Um, let's begin. Circular flow in market economies. Cómo se mueve el circulante. Primero que todo vean aquí, en color verde las flechas. Ese es el dinero que va de un sitio para otro. Así funciona la economía. Cómo se va moviendo, ¿ok? Y acá las compras o las ventas, ¿ok? Para que entienda más o menos la product market y factor market. The household son ustedes, los businesses acá. Okay, now, how do all these fundamental characteristics combine the, 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 the characteristics that uh, we spoke already in the previous class? I'm talking about the features. Combine to all our market economy and functions. Economists have developed a model to help them answer this question called circular flow model. So this is a model to explain you how the money in this in this situation, how the money uh, it goes around circle, okay? The flow, how is the flow? Now the money represents the two key economic decision makers in a market economy. The household household is you, your family, you as a person, which are made up of individuals like you and businesses. Between them, uh, there is a there is a circle. Uh, a flow of money that, that circle okay now it also shows the two market where household and business meets okay don't se encuentra product market the product market isn't a place as much as it's is a set of activities wherever or whenever whenever or wherever individuals purchase good service at a local mall dentist office the phone company on and online services selling concert ticket concert tickets they are doing so in the product markets okay so all of this is part of the product product market lo que acaban de llegar por favor pongan en el chat presente okay factor and the factor market is to run a business is the one who runs a business firms must it turns and purchase uh, what they need for the factor market. They market uh, for the factors of product. Uh, the market for the factors of product and the factor of product uh, we discussed in previous uh, chapter is the land, labor, capital, and uh, entrepreneurship. Okay. In the fact, factor market, the business are the customers and individuals are producers. A restaurant buys you a labor as a server. So, you consigo alguien que, que trabaje como, como, como empleado. Un restaurante contrata a alguien como si fuera un empleado. For example, for example, to serve meals are prepared by chef whose labor they have also bought. Que también se le consigue ya, from a part of the labor. The chef makes the meals for products bought from the farmers who owns the fields and farms equipment. Now circular flow, this set of interaction between businesses and individuals is illustrated in this picture and the one that I show you already. It says on the left, on the left here, on the left and right, 
uh, of the model, you can see the two main economic decision makers, businesses and household. This one, businesses and household is your family or you as a person. Uh, business. At the top and bottom here, product market and factor market are the product and factors. The green arrow is the money, represent the flow of money, the green, this one. And the blue represents the flow of uh, resource or products, okay? What they need. Impact of market economy, sorry, sorry. The impact of the market economy between uh, the late 1940s and the early 1990s, between one quarter of and one third of the world population live under command economic system, but they disappeared in the Soviet Union and, East, and its Eastern European neighbors, China, much of South Asia, Cuba, and North Korea, all had certainly planned economies. However, with the collapse of communism in the early 1990s, most of these countries have adopted some form of market economy. So they, 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 they in, in a way, they, they are using or they are adopting this market economy, all of them, all of this. Once they were communism, now they are open the market and they are adopting this in a way, not a hundred percent, but in a way a market economy, okay? Now, over here we want to talk about advantages. The advantage of one of the, the freedom is one of the chief advantage of a market economy, the freedom. A market economy requires that individuals be free to make their own economic choices. That's one. The, the other one, a government does not use a heavy hand to control the economy. That's another advantage. Another one advantage, the profits motive. La ganancia, por supuesto, causa un motivo. A key feature of the market economy is ensure the resource will be allocated efficiently since inefficiency would resolve in low profits. Definitivamente, tiene que estar de esta manera, hace que ellos, ellos ubican de una manera eficiente los recursos. ¿Para qué? Para poder tener ganancias. Si no lo ubican de una manera eficiente, entonces van a tener pérdidas, definitivamente. Okay, otra ventaja, if you come up with a good idea, it is an incentive. O sea, ellos pueden adoptar una buena idea, mientras que en el command economy, no, ellos mantienen lo que ellos dicen, se mantiene así, no, no hay motivo a que tú uses tu creatividad y puedas eh, cambiar o mejorar eh, algún sistema, eh, ya sea de venta o producción, cualquier cosa, ¿ya? Uh, incentive and much incentive and the last one the competition leads to higher quality and products at lower price esa otra de las ventajas aquí se, su, se resume todos de las ventajas aquí está ok now vamos a ver las desventajas disadvantage aquí yo los resumí solamente con esto okay. so disadvantage inequal distribution of income incomes on wealth definitivamente hay una hay una, eh, 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 un desbalance en, en la distribución de los recursos, la distribución de las riquezas, que es lo que sucede en la gran, gran parte de la población. Se concentra en una, un segmento de la población y, 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 y el que es pobre no puede salir de la pobreza, es difícil. Eh, así que esa es una de las desventajas. ¿Por qué? Porque el gobierno no puede intervenir. Si fuese comunista... Entonces, si el gobierno interviene, pero como no hay, el, 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 el Estado no puede intervenir, así que hay muchas irregularidades y entonces hay mucha pobreza en ese aspecto. Explotation. Uh -huh. Explotación. Explotation of economical poorer, del más pobre, y los menos poderosos se lo explotan a los, a, los, a los más pobres y a los menos poderosos. Desadvantage group, a desa, a desventaja entre los grupos, los inmigrantes, el low term, On employee are unfair treated. Son una manera, eh, son, no son tratados de buena, eh, correctamente. Muy bien. Básicamente esas son las desventajas. Eh, acuérdense que yo ya le envié, que tienen que terminarme estas, eh, las preguntas, se las envié en, en el ISAI, chicos. Ok. Muy bien. Ahora bien. Uh, para tener un mejor una mejor visión 
de lo que hemos visto de, del chart flow, cómo se maneja el, 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 el circulante y a qué se refiere con lo que es el chart flow. Sí. Le vamos a enviar acá, vamos a ver este video, este, este más chévere primero, vamos a ver este más, este más divertido primero y después lo tomo más serio. Se abra. Stop. ¿Por qué no has aprendido inglés todavía? ¿Sabías que 20% de la población de la Tierra habla inglés fluido? Y sabías que 55 This is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Today I'm going to show you something that's all around you that most people don't even see. It's called the Matrix and you're inside it right now. No! The circular flow matrix or model shows how products, resources, and money flow in the economy. Now look at your surroundings. Seriously, take a moment and look around you. The matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now in this very room. In a market economy, there's households, which is just people like you and me, and there's also businesses. Now, businesses sell goods and services to the households in something called the product market. It's not like just one place. It's anywhere things are sold, like online or the mall or the street corner, anywhere you can buy stuff. The computer or phone in front of you right now is a great example. I mean, you didn't produce that. A business did, and they sold it to you in the product market. The same thing applies to your chair or pencil or the book over there, everything around you. But to make those goods and services, businesses need resources like workers and machines. In the free market, households own the resources and they're sold to the businesses in the resource market. Economists point out that there's four categories of resources or four factors of production. The first one is land, which is any natural resource or anything that comes from other nature. Then there's labor, then capital, which is tools and machines. And finally, someone to bring it all together, the entrepreneur. That's why it's called the circular flow matrix. Those resources are being used by the business to produce the products that people turn around and go buy. Now, what about money? Well, it goes the other direction. When you buy your phone in the product market, you had to pay them money. That's called consumer spending. Now, that money makes its way to the businesses, and they call it revenue. But the business doesn't get to keep all that money. They've got to pay for resources, and that's called the cost of production. It's being paid to engineers that develop the phone. Those engineers earn income. Economists break down income into four different types that go along with each of the four factors of production. They're called factor payments. When you sell land, you earn rent. When you sell labor, you earn wages. For capital, you get interest. And for entrepreneurship, you get profit. So this is it, the circular flow matrix that shows how a market economy works. Whoa. Now, let me ask you a few questions to see if you really understand the matrix. First question, is your local mall an example of the product market or the resource market? It's both. Some people are there to buy products in the product market, but there's some people who are working or trying to get a job, and that's a resource market. So products, resources, and money are all being exchanged. Okay, next question, do businesses demand or supply? The answer is both. They demand in the resource market, but they supply in the product market. Households, on the other hand, demand in the product market, and they supply in the resource market. So both businesses and households are supplying and demanding. So far, this model is showing the private sector with just households and businesses. But there's a bunch of important things missing, like national defense, schools, and roads. Those things aren't produced by businesses. So let's add in the government and the public sector. The size and role of the government in the economy depends on a country's economic system, but in most market economies, the government still plays a role. First, the government buys goods and services from businesses in the product market, for example, fire trucks. And just like households, they pay for them. That's called government spending. The government also buys resources in the resource market, like teachers and firefighters. Again, it pays for those resources, which is again called government spending. The government then turns around and provides public goods and services, like fire protection, schools, roads, and bridges, to businesses and households. 
The government also pays money to businesses called subsidies or households called welfare. Economists call those transfer payments. There are situations when the government's giving out money, but not for goods and services. It's to meet some other objective, like to alleviate poverty or get companies to produce more fuel-efficient cars. But how does the government afford to provide public goods and welfare and subsidies? Well, they tax businesses and households. Income taxes and sales taxes fund government projects and programs. Now, there's several things still missing from this matrix, including a financial sector where money isn't spent, it's saved and then loaned out, and also the role of other countries with exports and imports. But for now, this diagram gives you a pretty good idea of how a modern economy works. One final thought. In the movie, The Matrix enslaves people. You are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage. Many people wonder if capitalism and this hamster wheel of constantly spending and earning and spending and earning enslaves people. Now, would your life be better off if you pulled a Thoreau and just lived out in the woods? I don't know, but what I do know is there's a lot of things you'd have to live without. First, there'd be no cell phones or computers, so say goodbye to YouTube, and also there'd be no modern medicine or hospitals. It would be nice if none of us had to work, but there's a trade-off to that. So does the Matrix enslave us or liberate us? Let me know in the comments below, all right? Thanks for watching. Until next time. Okay, I think you have a better view of what Circle of Flow is about. Uh, let's complete the class with this last the circular flow diagram. The circular flow diagram shows the flow of money in a free market economy. How far can one dollar go? There are three structures in a free market economy. Businesses, which represent firms, individuals, which represent households, and the government. The resource market, also known as the factor market, is a market where the factors of production, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship are bought and sold. The product market is a market where finished goods and services are bought and sold. Businesses make various goods and services and they sell them in the product market. Individuals buy goods and services from the product market. Individuals spend money in the product market. Businesses earn revenue from the product market. Businesses need resources from individuals. We as individuals own our land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Businesses then convert resources from individuals into goods and services. Businesses need to pay for all the resources they are using. These resources are called the costs of production, land, labor, and capital. The money individuals receive from business is called income. Government buys goods and services in the product market. Schools would be an example. And schools purchase equipment like computers in the product market. The money that government uses to buy goods in the product market is called government spending. Government hires resources, land, labor, and capital in the resource market that go into that government institution. Government also has to pay for that labor, and that money going into the resource market is called government spending. Government gets their revenue through taxes. Businesses pay corporate taxes, and individuals pay income and sales taxes. Government can also give money to businesses in what is called a subsidy. An example would be the government giving money to General Motors or give transfer payments to individuals. An example would be Social Security. Government also provides goods and services in what is called public goods to both businesses and individuals. An example would be the military, education, and our highway system. All of the green arrows represent the circular flow of money in a free market economy. Quick review. Businesses supply goods and services in the product market. Individuals demand goods and services in the product market. Individuals supply land, labor, and capital in the resource markets. Businesses demand land, labor, and capital in the resource markets. 
And that's it. The flow of that's it, guys. So uh, this is uh, with this last video we uh, complete chapter number three or topic number three that is about uh, the market economy, market economy. Okay, guys. Uh, now with these three topics, you have to create your mind map. Your mind map. Remember, you are a nice hat, uh, gathering. <laughs> Uh, you have to create your mind map and remain you got until Sunday to load up that document, guys. Are we clear? Do we have any questions? Questions, questions, questions. By the way, I evaluate already and I load up already your evaluation for the, the forums, for the forum, sorry, the forum. And also remember next week we're gonna have the first test. It's gonna be on Wednesday. On Wednesday, it's about well. You see on weekends. You see what what it's about. It's very easy. It's very easy. So don't worry. As long as you read and understand, then you do it fine. You'll do fine. Okay, guys. It's twelve fourteen. I have no more time for you guys. If you have any questions regarding uh, my map, then you send me your questions through Neo and then I'll try to explain it to you all. Okay guys, see you next week guys. Take care, behave, behave yourself.